Hi, and welcome to Learn DaVinci Resolve. Today, I'm going to answer some questions about working with multiple projects and multiple timelines and some tips to make that go a little smoother. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Okay, so some questions have come up about working with multiple projects and having assets that are easy to use on both of them and working on like multiple versions of one thing at a time. And while there's a couple different ways of doing things like that, especially versioning, I'm not going to get into versioning today. That's going to be another video. Today I'm going to show you how I often work with things to kind of um, look at different versions very quickly of something that I'm working on and how to share assets between different projects. So we're going to start with the asset sharing. And for me, like if you watch, look at all, all the videos on this channel, you'll see they all have a common intro and they all have a common outro. And instead of every time I do a new project, I have to pull those resources in and add them to my project. There's a very, very easy way of doing it. And what you want to do is go to your, oops, I'm not on, even on the right app. You want to go to the view menu and you want to turn on power bins. Power bins are not enabled by default. It's something you have to turn on. And what a power bin is, is a shared bin. It's there for any project that you create. So if I go over here on the left to my power bins, I have my master and uh, right now there's a couple things in there that shouldn't be, but there's a common audio piece that I use, some logos that I use, my lower thirds, uh, a background that I use, access to all my video music. So this is all in my power bin. So I'm in this particular project, which is my Learn DaVinci Resolve project, and I'm going to just uh, switch over to this other project from over the weekend and I go to my power bin and everything is still there. So regardless of the project I'm working on, power bins are a shared bin that goes from prod that's available in every project. So I love power bins. I think that is a huge thing. If you have assets that you are constantly using and you don't want to import them in every single time. Now I'm going to go back to the other project and show you a quick thing on how I work on multiple versions of something at the same time. So here is a um, simple edit that has a very basic color grade on it. And let's say I want to play around with a different grade for it. So I'm going to go and do a new timeline. I'm going to call this version 2. And I have a new timeline. Well, switching back and forth is not the easiest way of doing things. I could copy this and paste it in to the other and open them back and forth, but I want to just take pieces back and forth very easily. So I'm going to go over here to my timeline view options, and I'm going to go on my tabbed view. So stacked timelines. So now I can open this one. It's asked me to select my timeline. I'm going to select version two, and now on tabs, I can quickly go back and forth. So let's say I want to grab this piece. I'm going to copy it, go to version two, paste it in there. Then I can go into my coloring and let's boost some saturation. You know, I'll just leave it at that for right now. Maybe a little contrast bump on there. And my highlights are a little hot. So I'm just going to pull my highlights down a little bit, bring in more of that sky, and go back to my edit page. Now I can quickly go back and forth between two different timelines and see where I'm at. And the red one's going to be highlighted. So for me, when I'm doing, like, like I said, different versions of something, and I'm not quite sure how it's going to play out, or I, I'm trying two different pieces of music to see which one works better. Using stacked timelines is, for me, a very simple way 
of going back and forth without having to double click, open it, double click, open it, double click, open it. They're both right here at my fingertips. So that's how I do it. Um, again, one of the things I really like about DaVinci Resolve is its ability to have multiple ways of doing something. So again, another way would be to use what's called versions. Now, to me, that's a little higher end and it's a little more complicated and it's kind of like having a history that I can go back into and, and try different things. But for real time, on the go, flip back and forth, I think stacked timelines is a, a much faster, albeit simpler, way of doing things. So if you have some tips on improving a workflow with multiple timelines, multiple projects, please share them in the comments because your comments really do help other people. It's not just about me trying to help everybody. The people who are commenting are often helping other people as well. So I really do appreciate the comments that I get from all of you. And it really not just helps other people, but sometimes I learn something. I'm not the world's best at DaVinci Resolve, but I'm trying to get my experience out there to help other people get up and running as quickly as possible. So really appreciate you guys watching. I know this is a short one today, but I really wanted to touch on these two things because I think they can really help improve your workflow. Now I do have a request for all of you out there and almost every video there's one or two people that hit the thumbs down on it. If you're going to do a thumbs down on the video, please tell me why. I, I can't improve it if I don't have feedback on what you'd like to see better that would have got you to do a thumbs up on it. So if you're going to dislike it, please say why so I can help improve the videos. So thanks for watching everybody. Be sure and subscribe. Click that bell icon to get notified whenever a new video comes out. And I will catch you guys next time. And I just finished the DaVinci Resolve Fusion Train the Trainer program. So I've got some really cool ideas for some Fusion tutorials that'll be coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Thanks everybody. This has been Kerry and I will catch you next time. Bye bye.